Okay, back to the videos. Where are we? Hey, look, CB750 carburetors. Welcome to Hack a Week. Hey, I'm back. Back making videos again. Back in the garage working on the CB750. I know a lot of you have been really just like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where is he? <clears throat> anyway, he, um, he being me, was on vacation for a while. I really needed a break. I was starting to get burnt out. Getting burnt out on a project is no fun. No fun. Uh, I took a break and I'm back and here we go. We're gonna get back at the carburetors because that's where we left off. We put the engine, we being me and Lisa, put the engine in the bike. The bike's right over there, you can't see it, but honestly, it's right there. And we are gonna put the carburetors on next uh, and then we'll bolt the engine in. I'm going a little backwards. I got engine stuff to bolt in, but I really wanna get the carburetors put together because that's kind of where I left off. So enough yakking, let's get to work. Let's see what we got here. We got these pesky pod filters that I'm still not sure if I'm gonna use or not. Uh, I've heard good and bad things about those, but that's later. We'll worry about that later. Carburetors, these are all rebuilt. They're ready to go back on the rail that holds them all together. And uh, everything kind of bolts up here like so. There's holes in here where screws go in, hold the carburetors. We'll mount four carburetors up to these racks and we will install the mechanisms that will lift the throttle up and down, make us go fast. So we're just gonna start digging out bolts and nuts and throwing this crap together. Um, looking at pictures in the book and such. Let's get it all out here in the bench first. Got three, three shop manuals, count them, one, two, three. Each one has unique information. This is the old original factory one. It's got some cool information, but it kind of sucks for other stuff. The climber manual also has some cool information, but sucks for other stuff. The Haynes manual, you guessed it, some cool information, but sucks for other stuff. So we'll go through these and pick the one that shows me the nicest picture of the carburetors and we'll lay it out here and uh, I'll kind of show you in the drawing just what we're gonna do next. There's the three manuals all laid out. This is the climber manual here, this one is the Haynes manual, and this one is the factory manual. So let's take a look here. The factory manual pretty much focuses on the carburetors that were pulled by a cable. There were four cables with a central cable. You can see right there how they were set up uh, and that one is not the carbs I have. I have this other style that was actuated by these levers up and down here. So this book, um, like I said, has some information on some things that is really, really good, but on the carburetors doesn't really apply. So we're gonna put that aside. Now the climber manual, it does have uh, some stuff on this type of carburetor, but uh, not a whole lot that's really gonna help me out here. It's got some pictures on how to adjust the uh, push-pull cables. Um, let's see, what else we got here? This is uh, float level settings, the breakdown on the carburetor, and um, that's the kind that's pulled by the cable. So that one, uh -uh, not so much. But the Haynes manual has a pretty good breakdown of this carburetor. It's got all the basic settings, and it's got a lot of good photographs photographs of the real carburetor that we're working with here and uh, then it goes into how to set them up on the uh, part that raises and lowers the thing called the opening rods so uh, it goes into great detail here on how all that stuff goes together and it's pretty self-explanatory on how the carbs mount up to that rack I just got to get the screws on there and uh, put things together so Anyway, there you go. That's what's in those three manuals. Now, there is a book out there, um, the Honda Man publication, uh, My CB750, and that's a really good one. I just missed one on eBay a while back for 70 bucks. Should have bought it. Dumb to pass that one up. So that's enough uh, of that. Let's start putting things together. Back to the overhead shot. Okay, here's what we got. 
I got the carburetors all sitting together here. Here's the plate that holds them together temporarily on there. We'll pull this off. And these are set up, as I mentioned in the other video, so that they connect together from the side that operates the choke all the way across. They need to be in the right order. And these levers right here that operate the chokes are different. The ones in the middle have a little bit longer peg on them. And the reason for that peg is because two of these linkages right here are going to pile up on top of each other. So you can see that that peg right there is a little bit longer than this peg. That way you can put two of these linkages on this one and still have room to get the cotter pin in. All right, now that we have that explained, let's flip the carburetor over here. The fuel comes in right here. These carburetors are set up with a similar uh, casting on each side. So there's a casting there and there is a casting right here. This side though has a tiny hole in it that leads into the float bowl. And this little device right here, this little T fitting, joins the two of those together on each pair of carburetors. Let me pull this apart again. Set the carburetors down and show you this. There are four little O-rings on here. These O-rings are eight millimeter diameter on the inside of the O-ring. And uh, I think they're like 1.5, 1.7, something like that millimeters wide. Anyway, I found some at my local hardware store that fit just fine, along with little teeny cotter pins that will go on those linkages. So what we need to do first is pull these old O-rings off. Um, I'll just get those off with uh, a little flat blade screwdriver. And these are pretty uh, old and junked out. And when I pull them apart, they're probably just going to crack. Yeah, that one did. You see that one just split right apart. That's not too uncommon. They get uh, old and cracked. That's why we're going to replace them. So we'll pull all these off. All the O-rings are removed from both of these T-fittings. Let's get these O-rings on here now. You get this one in the second groove first. And just slide them over the top. You can see that's where it ends up, right there. And then we'll put the outer one on next. And we're gonna repeat that for the rest of them. So O-rings in place, all four of them. Now we're gonna take a little bit of silicone grease. I just used some dielectric tune-up grease. It's just basically silicone grease. Put a little bit on these O-rings. Tiny bit, just a little smear is all it takes. It really helps uh, the O-rings to slide into the holes. I'm just going to smear a little bit onto the casting on the hole where it goes in. And now, very carefully, I'm going to insert this and make sure that the O-ring doesn't bunch up and get messed up in the process. Just kind of give it a little wiggle and really watch it and make sure it's not being pinched. It should just pop right in there. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and put that one on the other side. But first, see those other two little nipples right there. A hose needs to go between those. So we're going to cut a piece about 23 to 25 millimeters long. I've pre-measured that. Got a caliper here set to that length. I'll just set this on there. And we're going to cut a piece of tubing. Eighth inch inside diameter vacuum hose works quite well. You can buy that at most auto parts stores. And just to make things a little easier, same thing, a little silicone grease helps a lot with anything rubber. I'm sliding onto metal. Let's push that one on there. Now we're going to have to do two things at once. Put this on and line up the O-rings, but hey, we can do that. Let's get the hose started first. And then just gently with the O-rings. Wiggle the hose a little more. O-ring, hose. There we go. Give it a bit of a wiggle. That's it. That's one set put together, ready to mount up on the rack. So we'll do the same thing to the other set, and then we'll put them on the rack. Almost forgot the uh, explanation for that little tube right there. That is the vent for the float bowl. There's one on each carburetor, and the orifice runs into the float bowl, allows air to come in as fuel gets pulled out. The uh, nipple over on this side is where the hose would go that will allow fresh air to come in and go into that float bowl.
So I've got the O-ring stuck in on this side and um, we're going to join these carburetors together now. And you want to make sure that you've got everything right. Uh, there is a certain order these go in. I'm going to go ahead and put them all together here and then we'll show you just what's what. So let's go ahead and push these together. Make sure the O-ring doesn't get pinched. Okay, and we'll just put that up out of the way because we're going to flip that upside down right there on the bench. Here is the other set. Here they are all lined up ready to go and um, there's some important stuff to note here. That little breather tube that's for the uh, float bowl, the one that connects between the two float bowls with that tube right there, that's the one that lets air into the float bowl. Those need to be on the center two carburetors. And then if we take this whole assembly and we flip it over and we're going to put the rack on there otherwise known as the stay plate. So it's going to go like that and if you've got everything right you've got the choke lever over on this side and all the way across you've got the chokes facing the same way with the two long pegs in the middle. Okay, let's flip this all over again. There's another important little thing needs to go in. This little device right here. This is what holds the spring, the return spring for the throttle and it goes into these two castings kind of ingenious on Honda's part. They just came up with a little widget that goes into those two empty castings there and holds that little thing so you can connect the throttle return spring. So let's put that in place and then we're going to flip it all over and now we're going to put the stay plate, rack, whatever you want to call it, in place. I'm going to put the screws in and we're going to tighten those up with a number one Phillips screwdriver. I'm just going to tighten these by hand, wedge everything in place where I can really crank on them and just give them a really good snug up by hand. That should be plenty enough. There's no real vibration on these. They're all mounted on rubber so I figure this is good enough. Okay let's get the choke linkages connected up here. These are adjustable with threads right here and you want to adjust them in such a manner so that you don't move the location of these when you put them on. We'll put the outside ones on first. Let's just drop one on here. Now that could be adjusted in probably a whole turn, maybe another half a turn. It should just drop right on easy. Okay, let's get this one on. A little adjustment required there. There we go. And we'll put the middle one on last. Oh, that one worked out just about right. Now we can put these flat washers in place. And then we'll put cotter pins through the little holes that are in all of these pegs. I'm going to bend those cotter pins like so just bend them right back on themselves like that and that's good enough that's what you want for each one of those all the cotter pins are in place let's check the linkage yep looks like it works good we'll flip it over and you can see the choke plates move into place when I pull the lever down and uh, another note on the float bowls all of the drain plugs are facing outwards we've got the two uh, breather tubes for the float bowls on the inner side of the assembly and now we can move on to this linkage. So this carburetor assembly was taken apart quite far. Uh, this stay plate as it's known on the back here uh, should pretty much be left together if you're going to take the carbs apart there's really no reason to take it apart. The previous owner of this bike decided to do it, I think, because he wanted to replate everything. Got a little bit too carried away, in my opinion. And you can see on the rod right here, this tiny little spot where it looks like it's been drilled. Well, it has, because right there is a little hole. Let me line it up here, and then I'm going to get you zoomed in so you can see what's happening. Um, right there in that small hole. See if we can get the focus happening there. That little slot, I'm going to slide it over. That slot right there lines up with that hole. Well, that hole used to have a little machined plug that went in there. 
and it was staked over. He drilled it out so he could take all this assembly apart, which was really pretty unnecessary, and I would not recommend doing that if you don't have to. Uh, there's, again, really no reason to do that. So now I'm stuck with coming up with a pin to put in there. I'm going to have to machine something or uh, figure out a way to make a little uh, threaded uh, device that will go in there. I've got some ideas. I could probably just do something like this where I uh, make a, a little screw maybe that you know just something that's like you know threads like this and then it has a rounded tip on it that would go into that uh, that spot so you know the shaft would be like this there's the housing I need to machine something like that maybe with some threads on it that'll go in there and hold that in place and what it does is it keeps this whole shaft from moving back and forth and keeps everything aligned properly so um, that'll be for another video we're gonna stop at this point right here well I think that's a wrap for this week the carburetors are mounted back up on the stay plate which is good everything lines up the way it's supposed to and now you know how to put all these parts together the way they're supposed to be so that the chokes work properly I really wish the previous owner wouldn't have taken this whole mechanism apart but uh, I'm gonna have to come up with a solution to this problem but that's what I do. I solve problems here on Hack a Week. I have an announcement. I'm going to start doing a new thing called Ask Dino. So if you have a question for me, just click on the About link in uh, my channel page here. And then over to the right side of the screen, you'll see a little box that says Message. Send me a message with your question. Once a month, I will do a video session where I answer those questions. Should be lots of fun. Ask me anything. Um, that's uh, that's all I got for now. Good to be back making videos again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And until next time. Hey, I'm back. That's right. Back at it with the stuff.